Hello, I'm Debbie Kitterman. And I'm Brandy Kitterman. And we are here to equip you and challenge you to, to dare, dare to, to hear, hear the voice of God. God. And today, our special guest on the podcast is Robin Elizabeth Miller. And she is the president, actually, we call her El Presidente, of <laughs> Fire Christian Writers. Um, and we're going to talk about how we met and we're going to talk about kind of the importance of getting prophetic words for people and how it encourages them today. But I also wanted to let you know that Robin has her MFA in creative writing. She has authored eight nonfiction books. Um, and for all of you who love Little House on the Prairie, you might have actually picked up her book. And if not, you're going to need to pick up one of the eight or all eight. Let's just say all eight of them. But uh, her first book, From the Mouth of Ma, and her most recent work is The Three Faces of Nellie. Robin is um, a speaker. She is a writing coach. She is, well, I don't know. She just wears many, many hats and all the things <laughs> And um, I just love her family. Uh, she is a speaker at writing retreats and just like, I don't know, you just travel a lot. So you're actually in a hotel room right now. So what are you doing? I am actually on deadline right now. So I'm not far from my house. But uh, if you, by the way, thank you for having me. You're very welcome. Let's, let's just start there. Um, <laughs> it, you, have you seen all the, the memes about May Stember? how it's as bad as December kind of thing. Yes. Uh, in, my, in my line of work, it's worse. And with all the, the writing conferences and retreats and things that go on in the spring, because I am, one of my hats is as a writing coach, people are getting ready for writing conferences and then they're getting kind of action points at writing conferences. And so I have been absolutely crazy. And I've got my own writing deadlines because that's, also what I am. Yes. And so I'm um, a couple of wear as many hats. <laughs> got lots of, I have a big head. I need a lot of hats. So <laughs> um, works out. Um, so I'm so I'm just I've taken a couple days. I'm only a half an hour from home, but I'm not telling even my husband what hotel I'm in. I'm like I figure he can track my phone if something happens. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, you know, uh, this is totally not on the topic of this, but my husband, you know, with the find a friend, like he stops yeah. me like when I'm going and he'll like so what are you doing at Chick-fil-A? <laughs> I'm like, how do you know I'm at Chick-fil-A? Because I forget that, that we have this find a friend thing so that he can stalk me. It's kind of creepy, actually. It's a little creepy and yet loving. And yet, <laughs> and yet, and yet, I'm going to, sure. Yeah. So absolutely, sure. Absolutely. So that's why I'm doing here. I've just had deadlines for my clients and deadlines for me. And um, sometimes I, I, I working at home and we're, we're getting ready, ready to move, and it's just chaos there. So, That's so, nice. so I, although coming up to the Pacific Northwest area, yes. with your house sells. So I'm excited because yes. we'll be closer in proximity. So, um, I'm having Robin on the show today because um, not only is she a great friend, and obviously she just has a lot of experience in a lot of different arenas, but also because she was an endorser of my book, and just kind of the way we met was actually through prophetic encouragement, and yeah. so. Uh, we met each other three years ago at a writing conference, and um, it was just kind of a, a God divine appointment when we were there. But I didn't give you a word then, so. Um, but I've given you several over the years, and then I absolutely yeah, you did. That was toast and tiaras. Well, you're right. It was toast and tiaras. It was toast and tiaras, but not at that. That it was like two days after we first met. Yeah, it wasn't the moment we met. No, it wasn't the moment we no. met. No, in fact, because you know, what is we, I forced your hand basically. Yes. I forced your hand. You did. You did a because bit. you were stalking me. A little bit. Just a little bit. A little, <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. So just know when you get a reputation for being able to operate people in the gift of prophetic encouragement, you get your own stalkers, but in a good way. <laughs> In a good way, because they're wanting to be blessed. They're wanting to be blessed by the Lord, right? Well, well, and in your case, because you are so, I mean, I felt like I was girl crushing. You're funny. You're intelligent. You are so warm. I was, and you had, you had the, um, the, the endorsement of Kim Bangs, who um, is one of the, the editors for your, for your book, um, <laughs> But she's also a friend of mine, and I respect her greatly. So she, browsing endorsement for you. And, and my friend Jane Daly and I uh, both just fell in love with you. We just totally fell in love with you. So I, I didn't do a lot of stalking. I just, like, looked at your Facebook page. And, and 
just a little socking. It was hardly <laughs> even worthy of a police report, really. Okay. Um, <laughs> Go to some, Randy. Be careful of those stalkers. Is that how we're classifying things nowadays? <laughs> you know, there's friendly stalking. There's scary stalking. Um, but I, but I'd looked and I'd seen that you, you know, you were a pastor and and you moved to the prophetic, and um, so Jane and I. Our love language is sarcasm, as you have now come to know. Yep. Um, and so we just thought we'd pull a little funny one on you and basically demand a prophetic word on the spot right there. You say you move in the prophetic, go. But we know that you didn't know us well enough to know that we were joking, <laughs> that we were just yeah, yanking your chain. I didn't know that. <laughs> we were just totally yanking your chain saying, you know, you call yourself a prophetic person, go. And, and then at this table, because we were at lunch and we did that, and we thought we were hysterical. I mean, we were cracking ourselves up. And then you and you, somebody came over to talk to you, and somebody came to talk to um, me or Jane or both of us. And so we kind of turned away from each other and thinking, Jane and I thought that we had, you know, had a great joke. And we started talking. And when we turned back, you were actually praying. And then I looked at Jane and thought, oh, she thought we were totally serious. <laughs> and that's how the prophetic works. It's just a dap you turn on. <clears throat> so then I'm, then I'm panicking. Then I'm totally embarrassed because I thought I ruined, you know, I ruined our little budding romance of friendship. And, um, but, but the funny thing was is, is sometimes the Lord can even move, you know, move in stupid situations like that. And you ended up having, having a, a powerful word for both um, Jane mm -hmm. and myself. And um, from that point, the fact that you didn't just like, while we were turned away, slip away to another table, like pretty much solidified you as a hero and a friend. And from that point, it's been, we haven't, I haven't, I've been sarcastic, but I haven't been like stupid with you since then, right? That, I learned my lesson, correct? Well, yeah, no, mostly, mostly. 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 Yeah, no, we have fun. We have fun. We we get to be silly and kind of crazy together. So, but also, but also, and that's one of the things that I that I value greatly about you, is that you move from the, the funny and this and but the things of God are no joke to you, no. and <laughs> that is that's very very um, important to me that we're really when we're talking about the things of God, that's, they're powerful. They're powerful. And, and I still hold, in fact, we were joking about toast and tiaras. Those are two of the things that we, Jane had a, had a, you gave her a prophetic word that involved a tiara, one of them, and a piece of toast for me. And, and it sounds sillier than it is, but it was very, it was very moving and profound for both of us. And Jane and I um, do a podcast together, and our our kind of overall company is called Toast and Tiaras. Not just because we like alliteration, but because the prophetic word that you spoke over us has reaped benefits in our lives. We've really, the Lord used those to strengthen us, encourage us, and send us down a path that we wouldn't have gone in another without that word. I think so. For us, mm -hmm. having Toast and Tiaras as a cute little logo, which nobody, of course, is going to know what that means. But for us, it's a reminder yeah. of what you shared with us on behalf of, of God and encouraged us to, to do some, some interesting things. So we're, we're, we, we have it all to, all to thank you for that we're even doing this podcast. I know. I forgot to actually say to people that they have this wonderful podcast for those of you that are writers or those of you that want to get into it. It's called The Art of Semi-Fiction. And it is so good. It's so good. It's so good. In fact, I think I'm going to have Jane on at some point too, because um, not because of necessarily the word that Tosin Tiara's word, but when I saw her recently, she was telling me that this prophetic word that I gave her a couple months ago was the thing that helped her move forward in this new writing project that yes. she got. And so I want her to share share is this that. Is that I'm reading? Yes. This oh is my gosh. I have my own girl crush. Yeah. On Jane. <laughs> I'm telling you. And, and, and that's, that's, I mean, as wonderful and you can say that it's, it's encouraging in a lovely way. It can be warm and it can be just a, a hug from God, but it can have profound consequences. I mean, you really are speaking into the heart of where people are when you carry the word of God into somebody's life. And you've done that for both of us. And that's not the only reason we're friends, just so you know. It's not the only reason. But it has it has the consequences of you stepping out in faith to 
give a word to us. Um, and Jane was a little bit, I have a little bit more of a background in moving in the prophetic and the gifts of the spirit than Jane in her, in her faith background. Right. Um, and you've had a huge impact on her, a huge impact. And of course, that's not just impacting her. This book gets written. This book that she's working on that she's really struggled with emotionally, not writing. She's a fabulous writer, um, but it's a powerful book on a powerful topic. And you're encouraging her is going to get the help get this book written, which is then going to be an encouragement. Yeah. So God's God's multiplying, multiplying the, the faith that you have in stepping out in that, that gift and it, multiplying that encouragement beyond our wildest expectations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and I think, I think one of the things I wanted to do is have you on because it was interesting that it was that prophetic word that started our relationship, which then I had asked you because of your position of being president of Inspire, would you be an endorser for my book? And then you had the opportunity to read it. And then she got really mad at me too. I got furious. What? Yeah. Really? So, so this is really, super yeah. mad. So, super yeah. mad. So tell everybody why you got mad at me. Cause she, you know, I thought when she said I got really mad at you, I thought, Oh my gosh, you don't like my book. I was no, what I was totally furious actually, because although you're going to laugh. So I had, it was leading up to, it was leading up to a writer's conference that we were both going to be at. And there was a deadline for, um, between when I got the actual advanced copy, when I had to do and turn in the, um, the endorsement. And so I've, I've already got a schedule that is a stupid because leading up to a conference, I always have personal things to do, professional things to do, my own writing stuff, my clients, all that kind of stuff. It's crazy. It's crazy time for me. And you're in the final stages of your MFA too. Oh gosh, yeah. Oh yeah, that little bit. Oh, that yeah. little bit too. <laughs> yeah, nothing big, you know, working on my thesis. Um, so I had all that going on and I had allotted, because I'm a really fast reader and I'm I allotted, I knew how many words approximately were, were in this book. I knew how long it would take me to read because I do it all the time because I critique things for, for clients and things. I, I have a really good idea and I allotted plenty of time to read the book and then do my endorsement right. plenty right. of time i had, but it was so good it was so good it was so good and she's got all these activation exercises and points to do so so it's not just reading it it's doing it and i kept doing them and i'm like I ha that was not i i don't have time i can do them later we can my husband and i can go through this as a you know devotion we can do but not now. I'm just supposed to read and endorse. That was all I was going to do. But I found myself, I'll just, one more activation. And then that's it. And I would do that. And then I would move on to the next chapter. And I'd do the next one and do the next one. I would sleep the entire week because I was doing the all the activations and thinking about it and pondering it and praying about it. And I couldn't not. I couldn't not i couldn't just read this book what i consider passively i couldn't just look at the words turn the pages mm -hmm. there ha there was just a compelling um active connection put in practice component for me and as a person who reads a lot of writing um a lot of writing that was one of the most unbelievable things about this book is if you are not spurred to action because it's, I, I've, I told, part of my endorsement says this, and I've told Debbie multiple times, it's grounded in great theology. It is great. So you don't just have to um, take for granted that this is a biblical principle that God, you know, has for the church now and just start there. It, it grounds you in theology. It grounds you in the why and the how and where it is in scripture. All of that, it's so just theologically sound. But then you cannot read if you've got the scripture background and you've got the compelling argument and you understand what God is wanting to do to, you know, for the church through this process, you can't not, you cannot just step out. And so to have a book that was so well-written and so um, theologically sound and so compelling 
was already impressive, but I couldn't help but engage with it. And that for me was, it was profound in the, from a writer standpoint, she did a great job. From a Christian standpoint, she did a great job. Theologically, she did a great job. But I didn't sleep the whole week. I didn't sleep. But by the time I got to her, I'm like, next time, tone down your excellence just a tad. And then, oh, get some sleep. Because I was not, I wasn't prepared for that. And of course, when you, when you do step out, and when you do the activation exercises, yes. God's going to move too. Yes. And, you, and you're not going to just go, yeah, I understand you're moving right now, Lord, and I understand what's going on, but I really have to finish this, you know, thesis or whatever. So, yeah. so it was, yeah, it was a crazy week for me, but it was a profound week. It was, it actually helped me and those around me and in what I was doing. And it, it was just, it was just a wonderful week, but it was exhausting. I'm not going to lie. So be prepared. You can't read it and not, and not be moved to action. All right. I like that. You can't read it in movie move fashion. Um, I wanted to talk just a little bit about like the importance of, like you talked a little bit about it for you and Jane, like the yeah. importance of receiving a prophetic word. So those of us that are taking the book, reading the book, stepping out in prophetic encouragement in, in sharing the stories and stuff, I want to talk about, because I got to come to your house in December and you hosted me and I got to meet your lovely British husband and your adorable son who is multi-talented in so many areas. Is, but I just um, love them so much. But I got to, you allowed me to speak a word over Noah James, your son. And, um, and then when I yeah. saw you again, you're like, you would not believe the change in him in just the way he prays. And from, um, can we talk about that? Is that okay to talk about? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Because I want, I think I want people to know that, that the importance of us giving life giving words when we speak them out to people sometimes yeah. we don't understand you know how mm -hmm. how much of an impact it actually has um i didn't realize the impact that it had on you and jane I, in fact i was joking with you like oh what i have stalkers now and and i thought you thought that it was that i was a pastor a woman pastor and then when you said the prophetic i was like oh and then I, and I think I joked back with you and said, oh, I'm not a slot machine that you can put a coin in and out pops your word. Yeah, yeah. And so I was joking, but then the Lord just totally downloaded. And so we talked a little bit about you, but I want to talk about like the transformation that you saw um, in your son too, just from receiving that. Can, can we talk about that a little bit? Absolutely. absolutely. Noah James is, is 12 now. And so he was 11 when that first one happened i think i think he was just 11. Yeah. and a little bit of background our older children he's the youngest of four of our living children and the older ones are all doctor from the foster care system and came with a, a hefty dose of issues so noah james is biological and he's he's had a lot of um he's lived around a lot of trauma and so we we're a praying family and we've spent a lot of time um deal, you know praying over the issues that uh are other children have and the impact in the family and all that sort of thing. And a couple of years ago, um, he's, he's always had a heart for, for, for God. And he's one of the things we were at a prayer meeting for our, our church and we were just praying and praying and praying. And he said to me, he wanted to be um, one of those people who can pray effectively for other people. And as a ministry, as an active, not just he's doing it in the background kind of prayer warrior stuff, but he wants to see people healed. He wants to see the dead risen. He wants to, and that was what he felt like he was called to do, but he was little. He was young. He's still young. And um, so I said, you wait, wait. If the Lord is calling you to that ministry, he's going to confirm it. And he's going to provide opportunities for you to practice, opportunities for you to step out of faith. He's going to provide um opportunities for you to see it in action and you're going to have it confirmed if that's what you if that is a gift that god has given you that he wants to call into action you're going to see it come to fruition in, a, in a, a lot of ways but you're going to be confirmed in it fast forward to meeting you and he's heard me talk about the the words that you've given me too and um, he knows he knows my background he knows how applicable they were he knows all that and he's prayed for me and and he's seen healing and things he's prayed for me a, a lot so he's not it wasn't that it was completely on the back burner but when you spoke to him and you spoke boldly and you spoke um 
words over him that called him um, into using that gift. I mean, you are confirming in him what God has already stirred in him, but you were the confirmation for him. And I told him, you, you can hear a lot of people will say, I think the Lord is telling you to do this or that. If it's not confirmed biblically, it's, you know, we wait for that confirmation right. and we wait for the timing. So back, way back when, when I told him that a word was spoken over him when we had him dedicated, that he would speak be using his, his voice for the Lord in some way. He would actually speak. So we, whether we thought he was going to be a pastor or a worship leader or an evangelist, well, I don't know what he was going to be, but we knew he was going to use, our, um, we knew from that word that he was going to use words. And then in his own heart, he wanted to use words via prayer to, to minister to the church. And then you come along, and one of the things that you said was about him speaking and using words. And, I mean, you've, there's been a lot of variations that, you, that you've spoken over him now a few times. But all of it served to encourage and confirm in him the calling that God has on him. Now, it's one thing for mama to say. I see in you this, I see in you that, for dad to say that, and the pastors to say that. But when somebody that, that only knows him through our, you know, our friendship, yeah. to come and call out what has been on his heart for forever mm -hmm. was such an encouragement, but it was also a confidence booster. Mm -hmm. So now it's not just mama seeing that he's a little prayer warrior. Yeah. saying, I think you're going to do great things for God. Now it's a total stranger who is saying it. And the confidence I've seen in him in stepping into his own destiny as a child of God who's got gifts to give to this world, the level of confidence I have seen is just shocking. It's absolutely shocking. He's doing, he's, I mean, even things that are, seem silly, but his school does a, they call it a bulldog blast, which is like an assembly, and they play the national anthem. He wants to be somebody who would stand up and sing the national anthem to show honor to his country and to also be a model to other, other people. But for weeks and weeks and weeks, months and months, he never did it. Not too long after you gave him the word, he stood up as the only kid, seventh grade, in seventh grade, where I was like trying to, you know, sink into the background. Right. <laughs> I don't know. I was not you. And, and, he, and he skipped a grade. So he's a year younger. He's not even the same age. And he stood up and sang the national anthem in, in front of the entire school. And he could have been ridiculed and smushed to the ground, but he felt that he was called to do that and to set an example and to honor his country. And so later I'm like, so why would you, you know, why, would you do that? why, what you, did you think where you just, acting on impulse or said, no, I've been thinking about it for a long time. And I just wanted to, to, to do that. And I felt like God was saying, stand up, show, show some respect for your country. And when we're getting all this stuff that's going on in the media, you know, show, show bravery, all these things. And I said, kind of, where did that come from? And it, all back to, to the word that you've given the confidence he's getting mm -hmm. to step into his gifts and to follow what God is telling him to do. Yeah. Which I'm going to go all like mom crying now. <laughs> all you want is your kid to listen to the one who loves them more than anything. Yeah. And to follow that voice. You want the, him to connect to the, the shepherd that is going to lead him well. And to hear him doing that now, even though it's a, I mean, it's obviously that's not a particularly revo you know, revolutionary thing that he did, but it was, it was him hearing the word of God or the, or, God speaking to him and acting on it boldly. So the next time it may be to raise somebody from the dead, the next time it may be to call out and somebody he doesn't know yeah. what God wants him to, to, to call out, but he's, he's being trained now to hear the word of God and act on it because of your boldness and in speaking into him. So, there you go. And I think Brandy can I think Brandy can relate a lot to that too. And I can too. So because, you know, being my daughter, everybody's like, Oh, I bet your mom gives you words, but she doesn't want words mm -mm, from me. No do. way. And and so it when other people confirm yeah. 
words to you and say things to you. Yeah, I mean, it makes a difference because like you said, like there's such a difference from mom saying it or dad saying it. But when somebody who doesn't know you comes yeah. up and says, this is what God is telling me about you, like that, oh. that, that alone is just like, oh, okay, so my heavenly father sees me and knows you know, these plans and these right. dreams that I have. And yeah. And, and, that, and that's, that's important for us. If we're going to step out into this gifting, mm-hmm. we can't just do it with the people that are safe. We right. can't just do that with those who we know are not going to reject us or, or whatever. So that's a, that's an important, important point. When God is wanting to confirm something in somebody's life, the best vehicle sometimes is someone who has no knowledge whatsoever at all, at all of the person, because their authority then is not in their own knowledge or their own stakes or whether they're manipulating you or whatever. It's because you know it's it's coming straight from God and that it has a much more powerful effect. Mm, that's so true. That's so true. Okay. So we only have a couple minutes left for our, our allotted time, but I want to going to put you on the spot. And if you can't remember, it's okay. Cause you read, I know you read the book, you read the book a while ago, but out of, out of the activations that you did, um, which one do you remember? Um, which one stood out to you or the one that you were like, wow, I never thought about this, um, activation. Cause I know you're pretty good at doing some of that. Um, you know, you know, okay, I'm going to use the caveat that I have had a head injury, and so my memory I know. is rubbish. But, I, so I'm not exactly sure how to phrase it, except I remember when, I, I can't even remember how it was, and I don't know if this was part activation and part me, but when, no, James is a miracle baby. We, we, yeah. we're, we waited 10 years to have him, and we lost a lot of kids. And we had three people from different countries give us the same verse and didn't know that we had trouble having children because we had adopted kids, which is always part of our intention to adopt four and have two was always what we had intended to do. So people who didn't know that we had no kids and that it hadn't been prayed about or talked about gave us a, the same verse. Um, so I remember reading something from the book, laying on the bed and thinking, God, I need you to remind me of the times that I, I have seen your work to embolden me to then speak to someone else. So I don't know if that, if that part was in activation or me just going, if you want me to do this activation, you're going to need to remind me. <laughs> remind me. Remind me. Remind me. Yeah. Which is a whole other topic of, of strengthening ourselves in, in the testimonies of what God has done. Exactly. But I think th- there are elements of it kind of like, remember what you've done before and, and what God will do again. And um, Well, the, the funny thing is, is the verse that we were given was in Psalms and it's um, Psalm 27, 13 and 14, for us seen the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And that, even that verse, even though that was our, the, the second part was the, you know, yeah. be strong and wait and have hope, you know, wait for the Lord. But the first part of that is, Remember what the Lord's done. Keep your mm-hmm. eye on what he's doing. Yeah. And if you do that, if you, and especially in your own life, when you've had words spoken over you and they've profoundly impacted you, remember that so that your boldness then will be based on what you have seen in your own life and seen in others, seen with your own eyes, then that translates to boldness for you. And so for, for me, it was interesting not only that he reminded me of the fact that I have three different people do, you know, speak into my life, and it was courage. We could have stopped trying because we did lose a lot of babies, um, but that was how we held on, and now we have this glorious 12-year-old um, child, but it was also the verse that was what was given to us that reminded me. Yeah. If we keep our eye on what the Lord has done, through people who probably were thinking, this lady has children. Why am I giving? Why, why am I saying this to her? I have no idea. In fact, I had two people say, I don't know why this is for you. Take it or leave it. You know, <laughs> let the Lord confirm it. You know, I mean, it was really, it was like, I don't even know what's going on here. But yeah. I'm supposed to say, you've been waiting for something for a long time. This is the verse I'm giving you. Apparently, it's for you. Okay, bye bye. I mean, they really, that's how they delivered it. And I went, oh. 
dang, that's the verse. That's the confirmation that we're meant to wait. Yeah. So, so for, for me, again, I'm, I, I remember just laying thinking, Lord, give me that boldness. Remind me of all the people who have spoken into my life. Remind me of the words that I've witnessed. Other people have spoken into their lives and have seen something powerful happen. And then let me not be afraid to step out in that. And I know that, that, that that's, you talk about that a lot of your book, how we, how we second guess ourselves and we say, oh, I don't know. And what if I'm wrong? And you know, what am I? Well, that was my, that was my mo moment of really remembering that all the people have spoken over and into my life and other people's lives. Yes, what, if yes. they had, what if they had done that too? I wouldn't be encouraged. I wouldn't be profoundly moved. I wouldn't be encouraged. My son wouldn't have the confidence that he's got. So, so it was a powerful, powerful moment of realization from your, from your encouragement to not let that bit of our humanness and what Satan's trying to do to stop it yeah. affect our stepping into what God's calling us to do. And that's to be encouraging. Yeah. Well, I want to, um, we, we, uh, I, and Brandy, you know, we, I, sometimes, you know, she doesn't say a lot, some, <laughs> so, but we want to thank you. I know, that. <laughs> I know, I, know. Well, I mean, <laughs> in real life. Yeah. I know when I have Jane on, it won't be me talking at all because she'll be fangirling on her. Sure. So she'll, she'll get to run Sorry. that interview. It's okay. Yeah. Um, but I just want to thank you for being on here and being open to share mm -hmm. and really talk about too. Um, just the importance of what it what it meant to not just you but also to your son uh, to receive prophetic words of encouragement that we can all do and how important it is for us to let that boldness and courage even if we don't see ourselves as prophetic encouragers we all are we just need to be willing to step out and so Definitely. I just thank you for for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us because you're on deadline and um, for joining us from your hotel room um, but I and I also want to thank you listeners for listening to dare to hear the podcast where we encourage you to dare to hear the voice of God. I'm Debbie Kitterman. And I'm Brandi Kitterman. And if you guys were encouraged in any way, um, please subscribe to our podcast and leave us a review. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to our channel and leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah. And uh, you can, uh, can we put the link for um, Jane and Robin's podcast yeah. too so we'll, Absolutely. we'll put that in the show notes or something so that they can find the art of semi-fiction because it's really good it and is. i love the bantering back and forth between <laughs> you and they're on youtube too and they're on youtube and if you you know you could actually go you have a website right it's the art of semi yep yep so for those of you that are listening you can do that and then you can actually read all the amazing things about jane and about robin but i just want to i think it's important for people to hear testimonies and stories and since you were one of the endorsers i wanted to have you on and uh and all of our listeners because we're recording from home today hopefully you get to hear the um, ambiance of the train going by <laughs> and different things because we cannot <laughs> we cannot stop the train and we're not in a soundproof room this is real life so if you like that may the sound of the train just bring you comfort. <laughs> so with that, we're, that's right. So with, <laughs> exactly. And so with that, we are signing off. Thank you for listening, and we look forward to you joining us next week. Tell your friends. Yeah. Cause there's me